guys, welcome back to the channel where I cover missing persons, unsolved cases, crime news, and more. Well, on the screen is James Cox. He's 79 years old. He was known in his St. Cloud, Florida neighborhood as Santa. Obviously, from his looks. And he also liked to dress up as Santa and not just at Christmas time. He was arrested last Tuesday, which would have been almost a week ago. I believe last Tuesday as I record this because today is Monday the 11th. That would have been the 5th. He was arrested on CSAM charges, uh, basically according to uh, charges allegedly uploading abuse material online uh, with his son, Henry Cox, who was 54, um, they made this material in their home and at least one public bathroom. The father, James, is actually now facing these charges alone because his son apparently decided to pew-pew himself, take his own life, before the cops and uh, feds arrived on the scene. So I guess he saw what was coming. According to federal documents, and I'll go over a bit on them, the investigation started when the St. Cloud Police Department received a tip from the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, we all know them as NCMEC, on November 15th, 2023. But the documents confuse me because there's September dates and 2022 dates, so you'll see how confusing it really gets. Uh, an unknown person apparently uploaded the abusive material to Microsoft Bing, Bing image, which I have, I've never even heard of. Um, law enforcement stated that they tracked this down to the Cox home. On January 17th, a state judge approved a search warrant for the premises and cops carried it out two days later. Another problem I have is they carried out the search warrant, but... They were not arrested and charged until March. So, trying to keep up with all this. Uh, Jay Cox and H. Cox were seen leaving the residence in separate cars and were subsequently stopped by patrol officers, federal documents said. Now, this was back in January before the son decided to take his own life. Now, St. Cloud Police Department made contact with both the father and the son in their separate cars outside of their premises, their home. Now, Jay Cox, Santa, admitted to possessing the images which triggered the cyber tip. He also admitted in a post-Miranda interview to looking for CSAM on the internet as well as using the Microsoft Bing image to look for similar CSAM images. So he immediately told him, yeah, I did it. I like CSAM. Sick. Oh, he's 79 years old. <sighs> now his son was shown two images which triggered the cyber tip. And while he acknowledged and initial that those were the images he had seen uh, and used to search for the images online, he allegedly um, admitted to reviewing them, but he denied anything further. Uh, a forensic analysis was completed by the Osceola County Sheriff's Office on the computer that Dad stated he used to look for the CSAM. St. Cloud Police were provided with the forensic results which show hundreds of thumbnail images of children being SA'd and exploited. The results also showed three videos which were deleted from the computer, but law enforcement was able to recover. Yeah, nothing is ever truly gone. Henry Cox, the son, denied having any denied having anything to know with it or knowing about it. Uh, investigators claim, however, that the son did not simply know about the material. He produced it and wasn't in some of it. In some of the videos, his face or voice can be heard or seen as recording the video. So that's kind of hard to explain. Oh, I don't know anything about it. Oh, well, how come your voice and your images in the video? 
I don't know. Homeland Security took in 15 electronic storage devices that they think belong to Henry Cox. Again, that's the son. Uh, as of the filing of the affidavit on March 1st, they found more than 50 photos or, or videos of abuse material. I, I think that number is going to be really low. Uh, some were made in the son's bedroom and others included evidence showing that he made them elsewhere. Now there's a color video without sound that's filmed in the stall of a public restroom. Henry can be seen in the mirror holding the recording device, which is a dark colored smartphone. Law enforcement claimed to also find a recording device during their search. Some CSAM media was observed to have been recorded from a partially obscured device on the floor level in a bathroom pointing at a toilet, according to the affidavit. Other observed CSAM images were taken of a sleeping victim which indicated the intent of the recordings. Additionally, during the execution of the search warrant at the home, uh, St. Cloud Police Department seized a white light bulb camera, which is believed to be a covert recording device. James Cox was arrested on Tuesday, this would be March 5th, and he currently is residing and digs at the Seminole County Jail, which is a federal facility, which is why that's where he is, and he's not in Osceola County or Orange County. So, again, uh, Henry Cox uh, died of an apparent uh, self-inflicted pew-pew wound. Uh, I guess he saw, like, again, what was coming, and he was too much of a, a loser to face the consequences before the federal warrant was served. Yeah. So these guys are real, real winners, as we can see. So let me play a bit of a news clip from, from WESH 2 about the search that was done last week. A man who lived here today didn't want to talk to me, but court documents say the people who lived here were making and uploading videos of child pornography, and some of the victims might have even lived in this neighborhood. One neighbor told me people call James Cox Santa, and you can see why. But investigators confirmed they raided his home, this bright blue house in a quiet St. Cloud neighborhood, as part of a child porn investigation. So you just don't think that it's going to be this close to your house, and then having four girls too, so it's a little, it's a little unsettling. <laughs> Today, we found court documents showing that agents with Homeland Security raided the house on Countryside View Drive, targeting James and Henry Cox after getting a tip that child porn was being uploaded from here. In an earlier raid, St. Cloud police allegedly found several hard drives with videos and images of kids being sexually abused and hidden cameras used to record kids going to the bathroom and changing clothes. Investigators even say, quote, at one point in a video, the camera pans across a mirror showing H. Cox as the one recording the video file. The complaint also says at least two of the victims appear to live in Cox's neighborhood. During Tuesday's raid, the medical examiner also took someone's body from the house, but they've not confirmed who that was. James Cox is now in the Seminole County Jail. No word on what happened to Henry Cox. A man who answered the door today said he had no comment. Emily Jenkins, who lives nearby, says she's glad her kids never came around this house. Well, I think it confirms like that we can't just be restful and let our kids play outside. It's always play in the backyard now. It's not like it used to be. In St. Cloud, Bob Hazen, WESH 2 News. So that this was this video was done before they knew that the deceased in the home was the son, Henry. So again, that is dad, 79 years old. And his son, who was 54, he decided to uh, take his own life instead of uh, suffering the consequences. Yeah. So I'm going to kind of go through the documents here. Uh, I will put it out right now. Trigger warning. This could be sensitive stuff. Uh, again, a lot of stuff has been going on in Osceola County and 
I'm starting to think that this may not be coincidental. And this is not far from where Madeline Soto was found on March 1st. This house is not far at all. All right, so this is the the United States District Court criminal complaint. Now, again, I'm kind of just getting into this case. It's kind of really kicked off last week with so much going on. But again, I, I, I'm feeling like there's a CSAM ring in Osceola County. And I would not be surprised if we find out that... <sighs> That Stephen Stearns and James Cox and Henry Cox, they all knew each other. I would not be surprised at all. Okay, so this criminal complaint is dated September 14th, 2023. And they spelled Osceola wrong, which hopefully they'll fix that. But I, I just have a real issue with the fact that why is this only coming out now? You know, why did this happen now? I, if this if this entire situation was, they got these complaints in September, why are, why are the rest just happening in January and March? Like I said, lots of questions. Now it states here that the criminal complaint is, uh, the offenses are knowingly transporting, receiving, or distributing uh, CSAM as well as production of CSAM. And this was again signed in, uh, looks like the uh, February 28th. So, I, again, I don't know if, the only thing I could think of is that they were, and then in January they did not, they did not get arrested and this was all being compounded and they were trying to see where it led. But, Again, I, 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 don't, I can only speculate at this point. So this is the United States District Court, Middle District of Florida, Orlando Division. So the affidavit in support of complaint. I, Albert Grooms, being duly sworn, do hereby depose and state the following. One, this affidavit is submitted in support of a criminal complaint against James Cox Jr., J. Cox, for violations, specifically knowingly tra transporting, receiving, or distributing CSAM, uh, and Henry Cox for violations, again, I'm not going to read the uh, statutes here, specifically production of CSAM. Two, as set forth in more detail below, I believe there is probable cause that on September 14, 2023, in Osceola County, Florida, Jay Cox did knowingly transport by uploading to Microsoft CSAM. Three, as set forth in more detail below, I believe there is probable cause that between January 28, 2022 and July 4th, 2022 in Osceola County, Florida, H. Cox produced CSAM using any means or facility of interstate or foreign commerce in violation of, there's the statute. See, this whole thing here, January 28, 2022 to July 4th, 2022, is that just the dates that they found during their September last year investigation? I'm hoping that that is what it means. Again, still doing further research into it. If you are watching this video and you you actually know, please let me know. Uh, again, and here we number number four. I am a special agent employed with the Department of Homeland Security, Homeland Security Investigations, and have been so employed since June 2020, 2015. Excuse me. I am currently assigned to the Orlando, Florida Office of HSI, and my duties include the enforcement of federal criminal statutes, including but not limited to Titles 8, 18, 19, 21, and 31 of the United States Code. I am a law enforcement officer of the United States uh, within the meaning of, and there's the statutes, and I'm empowered to investigate and make arrests for violations of United States criminal laws within the meaning of said statute. Five, my formal education includes a bachelor, 
bachelor's degree in criminal justice from American Military University and master's degree in human services counseling, criminal justice, and Liberty University. Through numerous advanced law enforcement training programs, I've received specialized training in the investigations of sex crimes, child exploitation, CSAM, and computer crimes. I have participated in training courses for the investigation and enforcement of CSAM, laws in which computers are used as the means for receiving, transmitting, and storing child storing CSAM. I'm not going to read as far more of his uh, training. So basically, he is, he's got to write that, but he's, he's very well educated and trained in this area. Probable cause statement. On November 15, 2023, St. Cloud Police Department received a cyber tip from the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, NCMEC, alleging an unknown person was uploading CSAM material to Microsoft Bing Image. Microsoft Bing Image, referred to as Visual Search, is a service that allows users to provide an image and search for similar images on the internet. The user can provide the image to be searched by either an upload or as a URL. The date and time provided on the cyber tip indicates the time at which the image was received and evaluated by the Bing Image Service. Uh, the cyber tip provided the following information regarding the uploaded files it was reporting. So yeah, nothing you do on the internet is is secret. So like these guys are just so into it though, I guess they really don't care. Uh, looks like they're talking about here's the files here. They listed the IP addresses. And it looks like the first one was from a peer-to-peer. -peer. Again, these are all peer-to-peer. -peer. September 14, 2023. September 14, 2023. And also another September 14th. And a fourth September 14th. So he's got four files on the 14th of September 2023. That's why it makes me wonder if those dates are, are wrong above too. So... Hopefully, if this affidavit's got any wrong typos, I mean, we saw that happen in the Madeline Soto uh, for for Mr. Stefan. So I hope they fix all that. The cyber tip also identified the manner at which these files were identified. According to the NCMEC cyber tip and the information provided by Microsoft for each of the target files, images match identically to harsh values of images reviewed by Microsoft content moderators. Based on training experience, I know that hash values are automated values that are associated with digital files and can be identified in the accompanying data, which is metadata, accompanying such files. And a lot of folks are asking metadata. That has the, anything to do with an image, a video, because they were mentioning that with Steven. That met, it's all metadata. It's all digital. That's exactly what it is. Uh, a hash value will remain the same for a digital file that is unmodified, and when modified, the hash value will change. A constant hash value can be used to show that the content of a digital file, such as an image, has remained unmodified. I also know that the service providers have systems in place to automatically identify certain hash values associated with digital files that have been previously identified as CSAM material as means of flagging without individually reviewing CSAM material. So they've already got a system in place that the computer's already like red flagging things are like, this is, this could be CSAM. So obviously with all the technology we have, that should be, that should hopefully if it works, that, that's great. Along with the NCMEC cyber tip, an explanation of flagging for CSAM, NCMEC also provided the underlying target files 1 to 4 to SCPD. A detective with S, uh, SCPD reviewed target files 1 through 4 uh, and confirmed they contained the following. All right, guys, definitely trigger warning. This is going to be descriptive. Target file 1 is an image that depicts a pu prepubescent female child completely naked from the waist down, lying on the ground with her legs opened, exposing her, you know what? There is a white substance consistent with coming out of her, yeah. Target file two is an image that it basically looks like the same thing. It's um, exposing her uh, and her and her breasts. Target file three is another pre is another pubescent female sitting on a rock completely naked. 
the child's legs are open, exposing her her uh, parts. I'm trying to be not too descriptive, even though it's on the screen. Target file four is an image that depicts a prepubescent female child, completely naked from the waist down, lying on the ground with her legs open. And she basically is completely exposed. And it, of course, and that gets worse with that one there. So these are nasty images. These are, these are children. Children. And at least two of them are worse than just photos of their body and stuff. I can't even imagine. Oh. Reading these made me think of the descriptions of the photos in the arrest affidavit for uh, Stefan Stern. Which is another reason why <sighs> kind of sounds like well, some of the same stuff. But of course, these pervs all like the same crap. A detective with SCPD served Charter Communications with a subpoena regarding IP1 and Charter responded with the following information. And they gave their IP information on September 14, 2023 uh, for the Cox household. And then from October, it looks like lease log is October 16, 2020 to November 18, 2023. So that may be why we have a 2022 dates unless it's um, mistyped on there. But that may be why, because of the open-ending uh, dates that they were searching from the internet provider. Uh, SCPD reviewed Florida driver's license, Florida driver's and vehicle information database, and discovered both J. Cox and H. Cox resided at that address. On January 17, 2024, a judge for the Ninth Judicial Circuit Court of Florida approved a Florida, search, Florida state search warrant for the subject premises. This search warrant authorized law enforcement to search the subject premises, including any structures and vehicles or motor homes on the property, to seize electronic devices and other evidence, and to conduct an on-site and off-site search and analysis, or to delegate the search and analysis to an off-site computer forensic analysis. On January 19, 2024, SCPD executed the search warrant uh, on the subject premises. J. Cox and H. Cox were seen leaving the residence in separate cars and were subsequently stopped by pr patrol officers. SCPD made contact with J. Cox and H. Cox in their separate cars outside of the subject premises. J. Cox admitted to possessing the images, which triggered the cyber tip. J. Cox also admitted in a post-Miranda interview to looking for CSAM on the internet and using the Microsoft Bing image to look for similar CSAM images. J. Cox was shown two images which triggered the cyber tip. He acknowledged and initialed that those were the images he had seen and used to search for like CSAM images online. SCPD also spoke with H. Cox, in, who in a post-Miranda interview denied any involvement and knowledge of CSAM being possessed. Yeah, he was the one denying it, and his father was just, like, I guess saying, I did it. SCPD sees multiple electronic devices from the house because J. Cox and H. Cox were stopped outside the scope of the residential warrant. SCPD obtained a second warrant, which covered electronic devices from their persons. From an initial forensic review of the devices retrieved pursuant to the search warrants, SCPD determined that H. Cox had been producing videos of prepubescent children focused on the exposed genital area of the children. Nasty ass. In some of the videos, the face and or voice of H. Cox is captured as the person recording the video. So yeah, it's kind of hard to deny that you know you don't know anything about it when you're like involved in the video, dumbass. SCPD was able to identify two of the prepubescent children in the videos as a 12-year-old boy and 8-year-old girl, girl that live in the neighborhood. Poor kids. A forensic analysis was completed by the Osceola County Sheriff's Office on the computer J. Cox stated he used to look for CSAM. SCPD was provided with the forensic results, which show hundreds of images of thumbnail, images of children being essayed and exploited. The results also showed three videos, 
which were deleted from the computer, but they were able to be recovered. One video depicts two prepubescent female children forced to engage, and I'm not going to read that. One video depicts a prepubescent female child sitting on the ground while a male... Okay, I'm not going to read that either. One video depicts a female performing an act on a prepubescent female child. Nasty. Nasty. And these poor people, they lived here. They had no idea. And according to the neighbors, James loved having the kids over. The kids thought he was a great guy. They had a big pool. You could see him when they do the shots over the home. They always invited the kids to come over and hang out in the pool. And apparently they offered ice pops and ice cream. Yeah. HS, HSI Orlando took custody of the 15 electronic storage devices believed to belong to H. Cox for full forensic analysis. To date, HSI computer forensic agents have found over 50 photos or videos of CSAM that meet the federal definition of CSAM. A review of these files indicate that some of the files were created in the bedroom known to be occupied by H. Cox. Some of the files contain other indications that they were produced by H. Cox. The following are examples of the CSAM files believed to be produced by H. Cox. Uh, file 5 is a color video without sound filmed in a stall of a public restroom. H. Cox can be seen in the mirror holding the recording device, which is a dark colored smartphone. The video is focused on a prepubescent male child approximately 8 to 10 years old using the toilet. My lord. H. Cox zooms in on the child for the duration of the video. Target file was found on a Seagate Ultra Touch hard drive that was found in the bedroom known to be occupied by H. Cox at the time the residential search was executed. So apparently... They didn't care if they were boys or girls. We are just nasty, nasty, nasty people. They just, like CSAM, nasty. And see, this is why Henry pew-pewed himself. He knew he was, he was screwed. Nasty. Only thing I could say for that is he saved the taxpayers a lot of money. Target File 6 is a color video with sound filmed in the stall of a public restroom. Uh, H. Cox can be seen at one point in the video where the camera is turned back toward the individual filming. The video is focused on a prepubescent male child, approximately 10 to 12 years old, using the toilet. And that talks about how he zooms in on a particular part of the child during the duration of the video. And that one was also found on a Seagate Ultra Touch hard drive that was found in the bedroom, known to be occupied by H. Cox at the time the residential search was executed. Target File 7 is a color video with sound filmed in the bedroom known to be occupied by H. Cox. The video is focused on a prepubescent male child, approximately 8 to 10 years old, changing his underwear. The focal point of the video is on the child's... Yeah. And at one point in the video, the camera pans across the mirror, showing H. Cox as the one recording the video file. The voice of H. Cox can be heard on the video talking to the child and possibly another child in the room. Target File 7 was found in a Seagate Ultra Touch hard drive that was found in the bedroom known to be occupied by H. Cox at the time the residential search warrant was executed. Target File 8 is a color video without sound filmed in the bedroom known to be occupied by H. Cox from the vantage point of the light bulb camera found in the room at the time of the search warrant. The video begins with a naked pubescent male child approximately 8 to 12 years of years old entering the room the camera follows the boy as he moves through the room naked with his uh, parts exposed to the camera the video ends when the child puts on a pair of underwear and leaves the room again this was also found on the seagate ultra touch hard drive that was found in the bedroom uh, known to be occupied by h cox yeah that sounds like they were changing and they were going to the pool that's what it sounds like to me and they had the hidden camera in the room Target File 9 is a color video with sound filmed in the shower of a public bathroom. The focal point is an 8 to 12 year old prepubescent male showering while an 8 to 12 year old male child enters and leaves the shower with him. At several points in the video, the camera zooms into the, uh, the 10 to 12 year old child. The voice of H. Cox can be heard talking to the children. And that file was also found on the Seagate Ultra Touch hard drive. 
Target file 10 is a color video with sound filmed in the shower of the public bathroom. The focal point is an 8 to 12, 8 to 10 year old prepubescent male showering. At several points in the video, the camera zooms into the privates of the child. The voice of H. Cox can be heard talking to the child. The target file 10 was found on the Seagate Ultra Touch hard drive that was found in the bedroom known to be occupied by H. Cox at the time of the search. Target file 11 is a color photo of a six to eight year old prepubescent male child standing completely naked on the bed in the room known to be occupied by H. Cox. The privates of the child are exposed to the camera. Target file 11 was found on a PNY micro SD card found inside an LG Q7 plus smartphone that was found in the bedroom known to be occupied by H. Cox at the time the residential search warrant was executed. Target file 12 is a color photo of a six to eight year old prepubescent male child laying completely naked on a towel on the bed in the room to be known to be occupied by H. Cox. The privates of the child is exposed to the camera and the focal point of the photo. <sighs> and an adult hand is uh, touching the child and I'm not going to read the rest of that. Yeah, if you guys want to read all this, this is on law and crime. I will link to that as well. States the Seagate, the Seagate Ultra Touch hard drive that was seized by St. Cloud Police Department during the execution of the residential search warrant has markings on the back of the hard drive that indicate the hard drive was manufactured in Thailand. The PNY micro SD cards are manufactured in Taiwan. A review of the EXIF data associated with the CSAM images on H. Cox computer electronic storage devices. Uh, indicates they were taken with a camera recording device which were observed as Gen Jenner Plus and GE Digital Camera A730 that was not seized during the initial search warrants executed by SCPD at the subject premises. Some CSAM media was observed to have been recorded from a partially obscured device at the floor level in a bathroom pointing at a toilet. Others observed CSAM images were taken of a sleeping victim indicating clandestine intent of the recordings. Additionally, during the execution of the search warrant at the subject premises, SCPD seized a white light bulb camera which is believed to be a covert recording device. I believe they had multiples of those around their house. That's my opinion. Conclusion. Based on the above, I submit there's probable cause that on September 14, 2023 in Osceola County, Florida, Jay Cox did knowingly transport by uploading to Microsoft CSAM. Based on the above, I submit there's probable cause that between January 28, 2022 and July 4, 2022 in Osceola County, Florida, H. Cox produced child CSAM using any means or facility of interstate or foreign commerce in violation of the statute. And it's signed by Special Agent Albert Grooms. And that is it. It's a lot. It's a lot. Whew. So, again, if you want to read it, I will post the link. It's graphic. That's why these guys, these nasty pedophiles, we got to do better. We really got to do better. And it's sad that people have to protect their children even in their own residential areas, but that's just unfortunately how it is. I mean, you can't, like the neighbors stay and you, you, you know, the kids had to play in the backyard. It's a very, very sad situation, but you got to protect your children first. Now, I do have questions as to, you know, why they, why things weren't told earlier, but unfortunately a lot of folks, they don't go by that, see something, say something, situation i mean these these kids were probably scared out of their minds they were probably groomed uh you know if he was inviting them to their house to go in the pool and he gave them like candy ice cream whatever he was grooming them and so was the son they were grooming these children they were trying to be their quote-unquote friends and that's not what they were doing and then of course they probably threatened them disgusting disgusting individuals and the fact that he was nicknamed santa that's just another whole level in itself but again i i, I do wonder if this is a ring and it's going to connect 
if the dots are going to connect to to Stefan Stearns. Did any of these tips recently come from one for the other? You know, did did Stefan Stearns stuff on his phone and his maybe his laptops did they go back to the Cox residence? And it also makes you wonder if this is another reason why we haven't heard any updates in the Madeline Soto case. So again, there's lots of questions. Uh, I'm glad that this nasty, nasty pedo is behind bars and he's in Seminole County. Like I said, he's in federal lockup. Not like Stephen Stearns, who's in Osceola County Jail. This guy is in federal and they don't play. So, again, we'll see if, if uh, Stefan connects, if these dots are starting to come together, if there's a ring in Osceola County. You know, we all know Grady Judd over in Polk County, which is, which is nearby. It's not far away. You know, it's another county or so over. You know, he's always picking up nasty folks for CSAM and all kinds of, you know, sexual crimes. So... Nothing would surprise me. Nothing would surprise me. But I tell you what, I feel awful for these families and these children who were affected by this. these two people. Disgusting. And I really hope that they can get the help that they need. This is just, it's awful. So I'm going to keep up on this one as well, guys. Um, again, I'm just kind of getting into this this case. And we'll see if the dots connect. I mean, what do you guys think? Do you think that that these guys knew each other? Do you think that uh, Santa knew uh, Stephen Stearns? I mean, Madeline was found like four or five minutes away. I mean, this is St. Cloud. She was found in St. Cloud, not far from where this blue house is on the screen. Obviously, it wasn't in a residential area, but... It was easily driven to by Stephen Stearns. So again, I don't know if there, I don't, I just don't believe there's any coincidences here. I think that there's some sort of nasty, sick connection. And Osceola County, Kissimmee Police Department, St. Cloud Police Department, and Homeland Security, for all we know, this is what they're working on besides the, uh, the murder of Madeline. They're, they're, they are working on these, these cases and they're connected. I mean, who knows? Maybe Madeline was found on some of this stuff. We don't know. All right, guys. I hope you have a great rest of the day. And most of all, stay safe.